Okay, welcome to the first in this series of Sports Science Careers Tutorials brought to you by SportsScienceTutor.com. We're going to kick things off by looking at the role of the sports biomechanist. Um, biomechanics can be broadly categorized into kinematics and kinetics. With kinematics, we're looking at the geometry of motion. So we're attempting to describe how an object moves with respect to time. And we're also interested in describing its pattern or sequencing of movement as well. With kinetics, we're looking to describe the forces of motion. So really, kinematics is concerned with the study of motion itself, whereas you could say kin kinetics is concerned with the study of the forces that are responsible for that motion, or at least the study of the forces that are associated with that motion. And if that's your kind of thing, that's your area of interest, and you're looking to pursue a career in sports biomechanics, uh, then a useful starting point is developing an understanding of the typical employers in the field of sports biomechanics. And to an extent, this will depend on whether you're interested in a research career or you're interested in becoming an applied sports biomechanist who's going to provide sports science support to athletes and to teams. If we're interested in a research career um, within sports biomechanics, then our most likely employer is going to be a university, and we're most likely to be employed as a university lecturer. Depending on the institution you're employed by, a certain proportion of your working week will be allocated to pursuing your research interests. Now, if we're actually really interested in becoming an applied sports biomechanist, then there are probably a greater number of typical employers out there, ranging from national governing bodies to the institutes of sport, so the English, Scottish, Welsh institutes of sport. A good overseas example might be the Australian Institute of Sport. But also professional sports teams are increasingly looking to appoint individuals with strong back backgrounds in sports biomechanics, although often they're looking for individuals to undertake performance analysis roles, so just bear that in mind. But having identified who the typical employers are, we need to take things one step further and establish what those employers are looking for in individuals when they're recruiting for sports biomechanists. We can actually do that quite easily by looking at the job advertisements that are uh, placed by these organizations and so if we do this now with a job advertisement that was placed for a lecturer in sports biomechanics by Liverpool Hope University we can look at the person's specification and look at the kind of requirements that might be needed for such a role so in terms of educational requirements seems a PhD is pretty much essential. They've suggested that uh, obtaining a PhD is of high importance and pretty much every lecturing role is going to require you to have a PhD. In terms of experiential requirements, teaching at undergraduate and postgraduate levels seems to be of high importance here as well. And in terms of skills and knowledge, a proven ability to teach enthusiastically and with innovative methods is desirable or actually of high importance here and also uh, research skills are of high importance. We can demonstrate our research skills through evidencing our PhD study and we can evidence our teaching ability through highlighting our teaching experience at undergraduate and postgraduate level. However that clearly means that a lecturing position is not an entry-level job for a sports science graduate. Even a sports science graduate who's gone on to study perhaps sports biomechanics at PhD level, without having teaching experience alongside that, is unlikely to secure a lecturing position. And so that's something we need to bear in mind when developing a pathway from graduation towards securing our ideal job. And so with that in mind, following completion of your undergraduate sports science degree, you might want to consider what type of master's level qualification is suitable for 
your career aspirations. And it may well be that an MRes degree is actually more suitable than the typical MSc degree. So an MSc degree is a Master of Science degree. An MRes degree is becoming increasingly popular and it's a Master of Research degree. And it's specifically designed to prepare students for PhD level study. And if you pursue this kind of Master's degree, that might put you in an advantageous position towards securing a PhD studentship further down the line. And a PhD studentship is going to be a particularly advantageous um, uh, position to obtain because typically you will um, receive a stipend of around £13,000 a year, you'll receive a tuition fee waiver, but also as part of the contract you'll be required to perform teaching activities related to your area of specialism and typically it's around six hours of teaching per week during term time um, and so three years of that teaching activity alongside your PhD study is actually going to put you in a very strong position to then obtain a lecturing position within sports biomechanics or within whatever field you are specializing in. So that would be a suitable route for someone who wants to go down the academic side of things in terms of their career aspirations. But for someone who wants to become an applied sports biomechanist, then following completion of their undergraduate degree, it's probably more suitable for such an individual to pursue a more traditional MSc type of master's degree and they would most likely specialize in sports biomechanics here but once again most sports biomechanics jobs even along the applied side of things are not really entry-level positions most positions require a high level of experience working with national teams or with professional teams and so we need to probably look Look at what type of jobs are available as entry-level positions and it may well be that you begin your career as a more general sports science support officer offering sports science support across um, different aspects of specialism so you might be offering physiology and psychology support alongside biomechanics support um, and then after a period of working in this interdisciplinary manner, it may be that you've acquired sufficient experience to then secure a specialist sports biomechanics um, role, perhaps at an institute of sport or with a professional sports team. Hopefully that's been of use to you in terms of outlining suitable pathways towards securing your desired um, career within sports science. If you'd like any more information or you'd like to discuss things in further depth, you might want to check out Mentor at sportsciencetutor.com.